I'm sure you've all heard about one inch sensors in smartphones and the reason why it's a feature that stands out is because it's really not very common. In fact, very few devices have a one inch sensor. Google, Samsung and Apple all forego this big hardware for something else and not too many people actually know what's going on with these things. So to illustrate it, I'm bringing in the help of some extra hardware. So let's dive into this topic because it's one I'm really interested in. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and when I hear one inch sensors and I look at the back of these phones, it does make me start to wonder how they got a one inch sensor in there. And the truth is, they didn't. One inch sensors are called so because of how old cameras used to work. There's a lot of technical details that I'm not gonna bore you with today. TLDR, these don't use one inch sensors, but the way that all cameras like this are measured falls in line so that the one inch sensor supposedly in this is certainly bigger than a one over 1.3 inch that you might find in a Galaxy Ultra, for example, but neither of those are literal measurements. By the way, guys, really trying to hit half a million subscribers, so if you wouldn't mind hitting that button, really help us out. Thank you very much. So then, what's all the fuss about? Well, having a big sensor enables a few things. Typically, they enable far better low light performance, the ability to capture more dynamic range, and the attached lenses tend to have larger actual apertures, so you'll notice more natural bokeh and focus fall off compared to the smaller sensors. I'm sure many of you have heard all of this before. There has been a bit of a movement happening online where people have started utilizing smartphones in a different kind of way to the general public in an attempt to prove that the cameras that we all have, even the ones that are non one inch sensors, are absolutely powerful enough to start serious smartphone photography. I've witnessed dozens of world-class photos taken on phones from the likes of Samsung, iPhone, and Pixel devices, all cameras that definitely don't have one inch sensors. And it comes down to something really rather interesting. This is Drew, a professional photographer who has become popular on Twitter thanks to his eye capturing work. He has been a big proponent of using smartphones to capture images, not needing a big bulky expensive camera to take something great, though he certainly still uses one of those. A lot of what makes those dreamy photos you see online actually interesting is post-processing. Not the stuff that happens when you take the shutter button, but what you do by taking those files into Lightroom or Snapseed and carefully adjusting to accentuate color, contrast, and get the desired look of your image. This is more like stylizing images, where most processing done in camera from smartphones is designed to make images look lifelike and natural, unless you've set a particular set of colors. So when you open your standard mode and you snap the shutter button, you're left with something that hopefully resembles roughly what you saw with your eyes. Whereas the best photos out there tend to have been fettered with slightly, if only slightly, but more times than not, this includes technical work with the color and the light as well. Sometimes with heavy masks and adjustments that you just wouldn't normally see out of a point and click sort of experience. Back to the hardware. The one inch sensor inside the likes of the Oppo, Xiaomi, Huawei and Vivo smartphones is the same kind of sensor you'll find in one of these guys. Of course, modern one inch sensors in smartphones are upwards of 50 megapixels versus the 20 you'll find in the little Sony camera. But the trade off here is that where the phone is a fixed focal length with digital crops, the Sony can zoom all the way to 2.5 times optically to give you more reach with sort of a lossless platform without missing loads of detail. Of course, it also has far more aperture options than the iPhone, but all of that comes at the cost of bulk. It's almost staggering to imagine how they got such a big sensor, even though it's not one inch, inside one of these bad boys. One with a big camera bump for sure, but still, this kind of thin versus the camera, which is just so much bulkier by comparison. It almost feels like we're at that point where smartphone screens were just a few short years ago. You know, every maker wanted their device to have a Quad HD Plus Ultra HD display, and we realized that actually the sweet spot is probably somewhere between Full HD Plus and Quad HD Plus, whether that be due to battery life complications, cost of implementation compromises, or because you needed the best of the best chipset just to drive the damn thing. Most phones these days don't ship in their maximum screen resolution mode right out of the box. They come with full HD, even if the display is capable of UHD or Quad HD. 
Perhaps we've reached that with the one inch sensor size and it makes sense to dial it back a bit because it's just something that's not worth the compromise, at least to most people. Even if the desired outcome isn't quite as technically impressive, this might be one of those times where specs simply don't tell the full story. And you only have to look at computational photography, particularly in the zoom cameras in a lot of smartphones. Okay, maybe not the one I'm holding here because it's a massive zoom, but the likes of the Galaxy Ultra, for example. There's more to it than sensor size. Most telephoto cameras are tiny, one over 2.55 inches, which is about the same size as the primary sensor in the original Google Pixel, but under obviously a thick telephoto lens. A lot of these are five times optical setups that can actually stretch quite comfortably to 10 times, sometimes even 15 times before you start to get major image degradation. And yeah, on sensors barely big enough to justify as selfie sensors. We're currently at a point where one over 1.3 or thereabouts is as big as most mainstream manufacturers are wanting to put into their phones, likely to not have a seriously huge camera bump to cut down manufacturing costs for sure. And because the general public, find them more than good enough thanks to the computational photography outside of the raw option that some enthusiasts are choosing to use. These sensors are comfortably bigger than what we used to have in our digicams years ago and with the advanced processing they've been able to be harnessed with stuff like HDR Plus to create simply fantastic imagery. It turns out that while sure bigger sensors are broadly technically superior, they do of course bring a different set of challenges like lens size, flange distances and so on. But as has been the case for many a year now, it doesn't really matter what camera you have as long as it's above a good enough threshold, which is what I'd say around a 1 over 1.5 inch setup will give you. And it's down to the photographer on the scene, but crucially in the edit, to pull together a really pleasing image. I'm sure if I gave a pro photographer a pocket phone and a complete amateur a Xiaomi Ultra, the pro would still take the better photos because no matter how good the hardware is, it's the humanoid in control of the thing that does the heavy lifting. So what do we learn from all of this? Well, that one inch sensors aren't actually one inch, but are comfortably bigger than what we find in iPhones and Pixels. That that fact bears almost no relevance when the person taking the picture isn't talented and that maybe the big three have just landed on a sensor size that's big enough. This stuff absolutely fascinates me and I'm sure you've seen plenty of smartphone photography camera videos for me down the years. So let me know how you feel about the big three here in the West not using one inch sensors. Is that something you're worried about? Or do you like me feel like maybe actually we kind of landed at a good sweet spot? Do you think we'll ever see one inch sensors in the big three over here? Or do you reckon we're at that point now where, yeah, we just do not need to go there? While you're down there in the comments, be sure to hit like if you enjoyed today's content. And of course, subscribe to never miss another upload on this channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I will catch you later. Cheers.